researcher at the University of Technology. And when the call for this invitation came in, I thought I should put the people through. So just a bit of background about myself and my field of study. Uh, I focus on leadership management. So basically, I try to see how leadership, the essence of leadership management could be linked to every aspect of research, health, AI, teaching and learning, everything. Because I mean, we can't run an organization without effective leadership management. And so the topic of my presentation um, focuses on that the role of intellectual stimulation on students' creativity improvement in higher education. And this is a systematic literature review. So basically, it's just um, a conceptual paper where we put together themes and you know related research um, reviews and then the analysis, and then we're able to draw out conclusions based on that. So um, a bit of background on this paper. As you can see in the diagram, um, I focus on transformational leadership in my PhD studies. And there were four main constructs of transformational leadership, which were inspirational motivation, intellectual stimulation, individualized consideration, and idealized influence. So four of those constructs, which is the four eyes, looks at different aspects of how. Um, sorry, excuse me. Can you just put the lights on? Sorry, what's happening? Okay, so these four aspects of transformational leadership um, looks at different aspects of how leaders or maybe the HODs or the management of higher education could inculcate or manage educational system based on whatever is under them. You know, when we look at the higher education, we're talking about you know the different structures in education. How could they manage stimulating staffs and also how could the staffs stimulate um, the students in terms of communicating their creativity. But for the for purpose of this paper, we focus on one aspect of this four aspects of transformational leadership, which is intellectual stimulation. Remember, the theme of this conference is more like creativity. How do we communicate creativity? How do we communicate originality of students? How do we stimulate them to be creative with their thinking, be creative with their communication, be creative in active learning or participative and interactive learning. So with that being said, my abstract basically focused on how you know the systematic literature was used through Prisma to get information based on how intellectual stimulation has helped you know educators in being able to communicate um, you know in terms of education, in terms of teaching and learning activities. And we all know that starting from the COVID era, you know things sort of went through more virtual and then we see that new generation are more interested in things that you know are captivating, interesting, things that catch their attention. And then they, they seem to find you know the normal theory of textbooks and just teaching basically and pouring out garbage in, garbage out, more like on the boring side. So how do teachers and educators Starting with the management, actually, because I mean, if the managers are not able to intellectually stimulate the staffs, how will the staffs learn how to stimulate the students? So I think this starts from the top strata of management in higher education. How could they communicate and you know carry their staffs along in terms of learning different um, teaching strategies and teaching methods? Uh, I was quite um, interested in one of her, I think your yeah her paper presentation and one I listened to yesterday. In fact, the broad. They made me see different, uh, 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 you know, different angles to creativity. Basically, you know, creativity sometimes is just about thinking out of the box, um, unique ideas, perceptions, and more like so. It looks like in classes the teachers just goes on and on without really engaging with the students. So I mean, how could we get creative as educators? I used to lecture uh, for six years at GUT. And I remember during like my course of lecturing, I'm a very I like uh, I like bringing fun in my teaching. So I don't spend so much time communicating what the theory has to say. I try to see how to practicalize it for them. Maybe tell a story, play a clip that could you know captivate them to get to understand what you're actually teaching. You know, so that's a teaching method. 
using a clip, you can, you, can, you can use even the TikTok videos, you get some interesting captions. Yesterday I listened to a paper on how um, an accounting lecturer links her accounting, teaches her accounting and communicates her accounting through poems. And I found that very interesting. We could also use like rapping, she talked about rapping, you know, making students rap, you know, um, words. And then in terms of rapping the words, they're able to communicate, you know, get it into their heads. And not just learning to pass, because that's what students do, they actually learn to pass. And when students do this, it doesn't stick with them. But when you bring creative ideas on how um, to engage them, in how to get, get their thought process, in how to get them to brainstorm, to, to think critically about it, then you actually are getting the originality of their voices. And speaking of which, we're talking about AI, you know, academic integrity and all of that. It starts with these little things, getting the originality of the voices of our students getting them to reflect and journal their thought processes with regards to what you teach. And other strategy methods could be engaging them in group case, case study, you know, um, group, group case study situations where they are, they are grouped and given assignments or projects, and then they brainstorm about it. There was an interesting presentation about how you could, you know, get them to design packaging, like in marketing, and then they go out look for businesses and then think out of the box, how could they help the businesses to um, formulate ways to design and you know, their packaging to make it more interesting. So basically, this is what my study is all about. How do we intellectually stimulate students? And so I have this diagram. Um, um, I have a presenter speak about using Legos, and I remember this diagram. So basically, these are perspectives of different people. You know, um, there's one with a red, yellow, green, how do we merge our perspectives? How do we merge our unique ideas to solve the problems and situations at hand in terms of research? And even how do we get students to be able to communicate their ideas? Don't make them feel that whatever they say is not um, necessary or necessary. Even if we wish to correct, we could find ways to get the positive aspect of what they've said and you know, find positive ways to correct them if their perspectives or opinions are not you know, giving out the right answers. So basically, intellectual stimulation is just you know getting your students to share their knowledge, share their ideas, share their thought processes um, in terms of problem solving, in terms of you know case study situations, and basically working as a team to ensure that there's effective learning and active engagement. So the problem statement from the study basically is stating that there's lack of creativity on the, on the side of higher education. You know, because really, if you be sincere with us, especially with the Gen X, the Gen X, <laughs> uh, the millennials even, some of us, we struggle with some of these computer gadgets and AI tools and all of that. We find more the Gen Zs being more interested in all of this. And that is actually a problem. Because I mean, when we try not to be flexible and try to learn what the Gen Zs are up to, then it's difficult for us to communicate with them. It's difficult. Sometimes you have to bring yourself down, you know, and be able to come, you know, get their attention and get them into understanding what you're communicating. And that is basically what the problem statement is stating, you know, inappropriate use of intellectual stimulation. So when we have leaders, managers, and even lecturers, as, lecturers are actually leaders because, I mean, the students are depending on you for communication, they're depending on you for knowledge. So you're more like a leader to your students. So if you lack creativity and you lack means of intellectually stimulating your students, then it becomes a problem in higher education. And we all know that you know millennials and moving upwards, they struggle with this, they resist change a lot. So the essence of intellectual stimulation should be something to consider or look into, to look at different aspects of ways to you know, intellectually stimulate students to be creative and engage in teaching and learning activities. So this is our research aim and objective. The study basically provides insights on the role of intellectual stimulation played out in the, as the management staffs in higher education to improve our student creativity in teaching and learning. So basically, we're going to talk about, this like the literature aspect of the paper, exploring the role of intellectual stimulation on student creativity in higher education. And as I said, this study is founded from the transformational leadership theory introduced by James Wall in 1978. Just for the sake of this paper, we're only taking one angle of transformational leadership, which is intellectual stimulation, and trying to see how we could link intellectual stimulation to engaging students to be interested in learning. You know, um, um, I had my HOD say, 
sometime back now. When the semester starts, you see children, um, the students are excited, they come for classes, you know, they've been home for so long. And then towards the middle part of the semester, or towards the ending, they start dragging their feet, they lose, you know, they get bored, they're tired, you know, they get fucked up. So we as lecturers or teachers or whatever that, you know, how do you stimulate them? How do you encourage them to look forward to coming to your classes, to look forward to coming, to attending your lectures? Basically, look for interesting ways, look for stories. Storytelling is very insightful. I share a lot of stories when I lecture then, when I used to lecture. I, I look for stories that fit into the topic I'm teaching. And by the time you share a story, maybe your personal lifestyle story or whatever, you find them engaging, you find them laughing. Even after the lecture, they come up to you, man, that story was quite interesting. You know, now you've complicated your story, and in terms of story you're lecturing and teaching, it's not like you're leaving your lecturing out of it, rather than just come and pour out all the things you have to say. So these are actually the role of intellectual stimulation in terms of you know, bringing out the creativity in your students. So for the research methodology, we followed the PRISMA method and basically I took these five steps. First, I identified my research question on a broader level. Then secondly, I identified relevant studies related to what I want to work on. And so the main key words for this study was intellectual stimulation, creativity, higher education. And then I looked in the internet, the Google Scholar, web, and all of that, I was able to source for quite a number of uh, research papers, you know, and then I selected based on all that I gathered, you know, find those ones that were repetitive, I'll duplicate, I took them out using the Prisma, and then I was able to move on to the fourth step, which is collating and presenting my results, and then finally coming out with findings from. So this is what the Prisma diagram looks like, which I used for, you know, so it stated how many publications I got, and then how I was able to remove the duplicates, and then settle for, you know, from 40, we went to 16, and then eventually I ended up with four included studies. These four included studies, I looked deeply into their, you know, analysis, their findings, their recommendations, which if you see my paper, um, hopefully, um, you get to, I can't have everything on the slide, unfortunately. So basically, the four main papers I focused on, this is how the study design sample looked like, the instrumental methods, and their main findings. And based on the findings, we're able to, you know, realize that, you know, when we encourage, you know, conclusion and recommendation, just encouraging creativity is a way of, you know, getting students to be actively um, participating in learning. We have students that are introverts. We have students that are extroverts. And then you find out that, um, yeah, students that will just want to voice out whether you call for their attention, they raise their hands a million times. And we we'll have those quiet ones hidden by the corner. And you'll be surprised that they have a lot to say. So you as a lecturer, how do you get to know your students one-on-one, -on -one, get to understand their personalities, you know, irrespective of how huge your class is, you know. And we realize from the studies that sometimes, you know, when lecturers lack creativity, it makes the pressure of work more for them. But when you make teaching interesting, when you make teaching creative, you as a lecturer will be very passionate about teaching because you see different dimensions of angles to communicate your teaching. So it puts more of passion than a burden to you. So finally, all of these things are stated in my conclusion and recommendation. I would not like to read the slides. I don't like reading slides when teaching. We will make you realize that, you know, as staffs, you can, you know, help um, the managers or maybe the HODs, I would say, is the person at the bottom end here. You know, he's trying to see how to get the staffs all together on the side of creativity, despite all the hassles, the bridge, you know, cross the bridge between, you know, um, lack of creativity, and then move them over through commitment, team player, integrity, you know, participation, and you know, just all of this, working on a compelling vision, guiding them, motivating them, directing them, and at the end of the day, you find out that staffs are involved. So it takes the, it takes the role of the HODs, take the role of the deans, you know, to organize workshops where lecturers are brought together and then discuss ways on how they could, you know, creatively make learning and teaching interesting. And with that being said, I think I've done justice to my presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Chiku. Chukuma. I'll give the floor the opportunity to give feedback and ask questions. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. I am interested to know with your methodology. 
Why did they choose a systematic literature review and not a scouting literature review? Sorry? Why did you why did you pick a systematic literature review methodology instead of a scouting literature? I think the systematic works better in terms of collating um, ideas and findings. It's more straightforward. Any more questions? Thank you for such a Thank you. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So, as a parting uh, statement, what would you give us as academics? Uh, what advice would you give us as academics uh, to try and what would you say that we need to do to stimulate creativity amongst our students uh, on a day to day basis? Okay. I think I mentioned um, organizing workshops where staffs are brought together and, you know, even through um, engaging them in team building, you learn a lot of exercises. I also mentioned the issue of playing clips, getting clips out. Tell a story to what you want to lecture, real world problems. You know, if you start by playing a, a, a 30 second or one minute video and then you communicate it, giving them opportunity to journal their thoughts, share their ideas. You know, we also make them able to relate their thoughts and perspective to life with regards to the theory of what they are being taught. So just little things here and there. Just to refresh our minds, some of our minds which are so tired and used to doing things such as this. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your good presentation. Thank you. Really nice. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, my next presenter.